Thank you for the kind introduction. My name is Dong Jun Ri. I'm a PhD student in the Department of Material Science and Engineering at Northwestern University. Today, I'm going to present to you my works on creating multi-scale graphene wrinkles with dynamically tunable topography. Let me start by introducing some background of graphene in the context of electronics. Graphene is a single layer of carbon atoms arranged into a honeycomb lattice. Different from graphite, where sheets of carbon lattices are bonded through van der Waals forces, graphene has a free pi electron for each carbon atom and exhibits an electron mobility of a two orders of magnitude higher than that of graphite. In addition, graphene has a high strength and yet low bending rigidity, and thus beneficial for creating flexible electronic devices. Graphene, however, lacks a band gap, which limits types of electronic devices that can be realized. One of the conventional methods to engineer electronic properties of graphene is to introduce nanohole arrays. The scanning electron microscopy image here shows so-called graphene nanomesh created after oxygen plasma etching through a mask. The resulting graphene nanomesh exhibits a band gap because of lateral quantum confinement and shows rectifying behavior needed for diodes. Another well-established method is to chemically functionalize the surface of graphene. For example, upon a fluorine-containing plasma treatment, bonds are formed between fluorine and carbon atoms, and the bond formation changes charge densities and introduces a band gap that widens with the fluorine coverage. However, both of these methods typically damage the graphene lattice and compromise the mechanical stiffness. Outer plane texturing of graphene has emerged as an alternative method to engineer the properties of graphene and maintain the structural integrity. In particular, nanoscale delaminate buckles can form spontaneously over centimeter scale areas by transferring graphene on a pre-strained elastomer sheet and relieving the strain. Because of increased aerial density per unit projected area, buckle graphene should increase light absorption than its flat counterpart. In addition, outer plane bending introduced rehybridization between sigma and pi aurelos in graphene, which enhances the chemical reactivity with increasing local curvature. Another obvious advantage of buckling method is that the properties can be dynamically tuned by changing the, changing the buckle topography with the substrate strain. However, Delaminate buckling can only produce nanostructures with a globally uniform periodicity, and therefore, engineering properties in an area-specific manner is challenging. Moreover, the tunability range and the mechanical robustness of buckled graphene under stretching is limited because graphene cracks under tensile strain, especially in delaminate areas. To address these challenges, our group developed a conformal wrinkling strategy where we introduce a thin fluoropolymer layer between graphene and a pre-strained polystyrene substrate. The fluoropolymer layer suppressed the lamination of graphene from the underlying support during strain relief, which resulted in sinusoidal wrinkle structures characterized by an average peak-to-peak -peak distance or a wrinkle wavelength, lambda. <laughs> because the wavelength of wrinkle is proportional to the thickness of thin film, Graphene wrinkle wavelength could be tuned from several nanometers to over micrometers by simply changing the floor polymer thickness, H, here. More interestingly, we could create wrinkles with multiple distinct wavelengths on a single sheet of graphene by pairing the floor polymer layers with different spatial thicknesses. This slide shows how the multi-scale wrinkles can be useful in engineering the properties of graphene so here, we arrange graphene nanostructures into line patches with wrinkles and crumples side by side, and these nanostructures have different local curvatures. After fluorination using CF4 plasma treatment, graphene exhibited spatial contrast in Raman peak ratios that scales with the fluorination levels because the crumple regions were more reactive than wrinkles, uh, wrinkle regions with a lower peak curvature. Moreover, because electrical conductivity of graphene decreases with a degree of fluorination, our method created microdomains with distinct electrical properties in a single-step plasma treatment, 
without needing to apply multiple masking and functionalization processes that were typically needed in previous studies. Being able to reconfigure topography of these multi-scale graphene wrinkles would offer a more design flexibility in engineering the local properties. However, the thermoplastic system that we established can only be deformed above the glass transition temperature of the polystyrene substrate, which is typically 100 degrees Celsius. Alternatively, we can use an elastomeric substrate coated with fluoropolymer layers, but the challenge is that maintaining integrity of graphene would be difficult because graphene typically cracks when it's stretched more than few percent tensile strain. And also, maintaining conformal contact of graphene at boundaries between regions of different floor polymer layer thicknesses would not be trivial. So this is how we integrated graphene with the elastomeric wrinkling system. First, we mechanically stretched a polydimethyl siloxane or a PDMS substrate to apply pre-strain, treated the surface with CHF3 plasma to form floor polymer layer, transfer CVD graphene by wet transfer method using PMMA support layers, and then relieve the pre-strain to compress graphene and form wrinkles, which are aligned perpendicular to the strain relief direction. So these are FM images, images of graphene wrinkles formed with different amount of pre-strains. What is interesting here is that graphene only showed minor tears with widths less than 50 nanometers, although there was substantial tensile strain in the direction perpendicular to the strain relief. For example, relieving 70% pre-strain applies 30% tensile strain in the transverse direction, which is two to three times more than the intrinsic fracture strain of the CVD graphene. In contrast, buccal graphene formed without the fluoropolymer layer cracked, and the crack width increased with increasing pre-strain. To understand how the fluoropolymer layer mitigates crack formation, we analyzed Raman spectra of graphene before and after forming nanostructures. The type of graphene substrate interactions can be identified by investigating three characteristic features in Raman spectra. One, positions of G and 2D peaks. Two, the full width half max of the G peak. And three, the ratio of 2D and G peak intensities. Flat graphene on PDMS substrate showed G and 2D peaks located at 1583 and 2670 inverse centimeters, similar to a freestanding graphene that is nearly charge neutral. In addition, the full width half max of the G peak and Raman intensity ratios were close to undoped graphene, which suggests that graphene was bonded to PDMS through weak van der Waals forces with marginal charge doping. In contrast, the floor polymer layer caused notable shifts in G and 2D bands toward higher wave numbers, resulting in a decrease in fully half max of the G peak and Raman intensity ratios. These spectral changes can be attributed to hole doping rather than electron injection or mechanical strain because the G and 2D peak positions follow a trend line expected for graphene doped with hole at a constant strain which is shown as the yellow line on the plot. We concluded that the electrostatic forces involved with hole doping may account for robust adhesion between graphene and the floor polymer layer during the conformal wrinkling process. We then compared the strain generated by textured graphene with and without the floor polymer layer. For both graphene wrinkles and delaminated buckles, wave numbers of G and 2D peaks closely followed a trend line with a slope of 2.2, which are shown here as a black dashed lines, which suggests that the relief of pre-strain applied effectively compressive strain to graphene without additional charge doping. Significantly, conformal graphene wrinkles show smaller shift in 2D peak relative to flat state than delaminate buckles for all tested pre-strains which indicates that the floor polymer layer reduced strain in graphene during texturing. So the advantage of floor polymer layer was even more clear when we tuned the topography of graphene nanotextures by stretching the substrate. On the left, we see AFM images of graphene wrinkles and delaminate buckles formed from relieving 30% pre-strain. 
as we stretch the substrate perpendicular to the wrinkles, wrinkles flattened out to accommodate the tensile strain. At the same time, the system is compressed in the transverse direction, which forms these trench-like intermediate structures perpendicular to the wrinkles. When the tensile strain is equal to the pre-strain amount, 30%, the graphene fluoropolymer composite layer showed wrinkles and intermediate structures rather than recovering expected flat geometry. Under increasing strain, these intermediate structures gradually transform into wrinkles with a switched orientation. Significantly, only minor tears were observed even when the system was stretched to 60%, which is 30% more than the substrate pre-strain. Once the substrate was released from 60% stretching, the wrinkles recovered their initial orientation with slight decrease in wavelength and amplitude. And this switching can be repeated multiple times, up to 1,000 times, uh, without a notable change in wrinkle wavelength and amplitude at both stretched and release states. The advantage of conformal wrinkling process compared to delaminate buckling is that feature sizes can be precisely tuned via the design of floor polymer layers. By pairing floor polymer layers with different thicknesses on the same PDMS substrate, we fabricated wrinkles with various spatial wavelengths side by side on a single graphing sheet. First, the surface of pre-strained PDMS sheet was covered with polyvinyl pyrrolidone line patterns based on our well-established inverse solvent-assisted nanoscale embossing using a PDMS mold. After a CHF plate, CHF3 plasma exposure and lift off of the PVP with ethanol, only the areas that are not covered by PVP lines were coated with the fluoropolymer layers. Treating the surface with another round of CHF3 plasma created two distinct regions with different layer thicknesses. After graphene transfer and strain relief of the substrate, microdomains with two distinct wrinkle wavelengths were formed. So this is the AFM image of multi-scale graphene wrinkles corresponding to the fabrication scheme that I just showed you on the previous slide. And as a reminder, the wrinkle wavelength is proportional to the thickness of the fluoropolymer layer that is sandwiched between the graphene and the PDMS. So the region one corresponds to thinner fluoropolymer layer that resulted in smaller wrinkles. And the region two has a thicker fluoropolymer layer producing larger wrinkles. Significantly, crack formation and delamination were suppressed even at the edges between regions with different floor polymer thicknesses because conformal contact between graphene and the parent floor polymer layer was robust. What it can do further is to add one, another cycle of area selective floor polymer layer deposition, which produced four distinct wavelengths after graphene transfer and strain relief. Similar to the graphene wrinkles with globally uniform wavelength, these multi-scale graphene wrinkles could switch orientations when the substrate was stressed. So in summary, we realized multi-scale graphene wrinkles that can change wavelength and orientation at adjacent spatially selective regions under tensile strain and reversible structural transformation were possible because cracks were suppressed during stress release cycles. So I'd like to thank Professor Terry Odom, who's my advisor, and Dr. Shi Kai Deng and Wong Kyu Lee for experimental power of this project. And although I didn't present the modeling results because of time limitation, I thank Professor Jeff Pesty and George Schatz for a theoretical part of the work. I'll stop here and thank you for your attention.